Hey guys, it's Keith from IELTS Speaking Success and today we've got a focus on part two. There's a model answer and an, a language analysis of how I made the answer and what's the useful idiomatic language and natural English to help you create really good part two answers as well. Stick around, there's a surprise at the very, very end. Let's get straight into it. And now in this video, we're moving on to part two of the IELTS speaking, and we'll be looking at a part two model answer. And this one is on the topic of shopping. And the question is, describe an item you bought, but have rarely used. You should say what it was, where you bought it, and why you rarely or never use it, and explain how you feel about this purchase now. So here, let's go ahead and let's watch a model answer for this question. A while back, I bought some roller skates because I wanted to get back into shape. I'd been rather lazy and inactive um, and needed to do some exercise. What's more, I'd seen other people in the local park, young and old, skating. So I was quite envious, envious of their freedom and of their energy. I guess I coveted their skates. I think deep down, I just wanted to be cool and hip like them. So I nipped down to the shops. Um, and I browsed a few different sports shops, as you do, trying to educate yourself. And I wanted to find out why some skates were so much more expensive than others and what I needed to look out for when buying roller skates. I was on a bit of a tight budget. So in the end, I opted for an affordable pair of nice black skates. Of course, the salesman twisted my arm uh, and convinced me to buy the protective gear, the helmet and the, the padding. Well, that was in autumn. And then November came and it was windy and rainy. And then winter set in and it started snowing and I just didn't go out. I kept putting it off and off and off. So the skates just sat there on the shelf, gathering dust. I don't feel bad about it because I'm sure that one day I will get round to using them. Well, once the weather perks up. And so welcome back. I hoped the model answer was useful, but let's actually dig deeper and find out about the language I used and how you can use it. So, a while back. This is a very natural connector or a linking word to say recently, not a specific time, but a while back. I bought some roller skates because I wanted to get back into shape, get back into shape to get fit again. It's my new hobby, a bit like the jogging, right? I wanted to get back into shape, get fit again, because I had been rather lazy. This is a true story. What's more, nice connector, I had seen other people, young and old, skating in the local park. So I was quite envious. So envious is I want what they have. Um, envious of their freedom and their energy. I guess I coveted their skates. Coveted is a great word. Again, it means I want something someone else has. It's interesting because as a child, in my family, we were brought up not to covet other people's things. And you know what you're like as a child. Oh, Johnny has a better bicycle. I want a bicycle like that. But we were told, don't covet other people's things. 
which is great, but look at me now as an adult and I still coveted the skates. But I think deep down, so something I felt inside, hidden, you can't see, is actually I didn't want the skates. It wasn't the skates I wanted, it was the image to be cool and hip, interesting. So I nipped down to the shops. It's informal, but it's absolutely fine for IELTS speaking test. I nipped down, I went down to the shops. It doesn't have to be down. I mean, if you live at the bottom of a hill and the shops at the top, then you nip up to the shops. Or you can nip out to the shops or even nip round to the shops, doesn't matter. I happened to nip down to the shops. I browsed a few different sports shops, browsed, remember? As you do, meaning really that this is a normal thing, like everyone does. I browsed a few different sports shops, as you do. It's not you, as you do, but as everyone does. It's a normal thing. As you do, trying to educate yourself, everyone. So I wanted to find out why some skates were so much more expensive than others, and it's true. And what I needed to look out for when buying roller skates. So to look out for, to look carefully at things in order to find a particular one. If you look at a lot of people, and I'm looking out for John. Ah, there he is. You're looking out for the, the here, what to look out for. What When I'm buying roller skates, maybe you need to look out for the material or look out for the wheels or look out for the color, if that's important. Okay. I was on a bit of a tight budget. We mentioned you don't have a lot of money to spend. I opted for an affordable pair, which is not expensive. Okay. And of course, the salesman, he twisted my arm. What a great expression. Twist is to twist like this, but to twist your arm is actually to do this. And when the salesman twists your arm and you say yes, of course, it's idiomatic because they don't really twist your arm or you would call the police. But he twisted my arm by convincing me to buy it. And he convinced me to buy the helmet, the padding, not here, the padding goes on your elbows, your um, wrists and your knees in case you fall. Moving on, that was in autumn, then November came. And then winter set in. That just means it began. It's normally a negative thing. If something sets in, then it's not usually very good. The winter set in. I kept putting it off to postpone something. Um, it's a separable phrasal verb. So you can say, I put the appointment off, or I put the skating off, or I put off the skating. I put off the appointment. You can separate or put them together. Both are good. And so the skates gathered dust. It's idiomatic because it doesn't have to mean they collected dust, although they did. It just means anything that hasn't been used for a long time, we say it gathered dust. I don't feel bad about it. I'm sure that one day I will get round to using them. I will finally do it. I will finally use them. I'm sure I will get round to using them. Great phrasal verb. Once the weather perks up, perks up. Notice the link, perks up. With so many phrasal verbs, there's a link, perks up. It just means to improve. So once the weather improves, the weather can perk up or um, your mood perks up. You need to perk up. You're so sad, it's time to perk up. Or maybe the prices perk up. 
It doesn't mean they go up. It means they improve. So if I'm selling something, or maybe I have a, an investment in the stock market, I hope prices will perk up, will get better. Excellent. So that actually brings us to the end of the analysis of part two. So if you like this video, there are lots, lots more just like this in my new online course. It's on Udemy. It's designed to give you the language, ideas and confidence to get a band seven in the IELTS speaking test. Check it out. And if it's the right time for you, sign up. Take care. Bye bye.